Yes. So I want to do the introduction right now. I want to go and do the introduction right now. good evening it's good to be here again uh, we are very sorry for coming late we are battling with the technical issue but we are glad everything is intact right now and we are good to go so our speaker is right here in our midst and let's just do it once and for all because we have been battling with the, with the issue with the network but we are glad everything is intact so uh, before we bring our speaker up, let me quickly do an introduction about our speaker so that we'll get to know whom she is. Okay, so uh, uh look, she, she will come online and uh, she, when she comes up, she will tell you call her name because I find it hard to pronounce her name. I've tried, but <laughs> I'm still finding it hard to pronounce her name. So, uh, Rukweve, Rukweme, help. Uh, NGOs to raise fund. Uh, she told she teach on her NGO on how to raise fund, and uh, she's an expert in that area. So uh, uh, she has done a lot in that area by uh, to help NGO. So I don't uh, let me let me just bring her up so that she will, she will do the intro. She will do that for us because I don't really have the. The, that one for her. Hello, ma'am. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Welcome to Crossroad Africa. Oh, thank you for having me. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you so much for the patient and for your time. Yeah, no time. Problem. yeah. So we tonight we, we we want to learn from you on how to raise funds and for an NGO. And we believe that okay. you, as an expert, is your field, and you'll be able to take us the class. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we are here to learn from you, and we can go ahead. Uh, we can. We, I mean, we can go ahead right now. With that. Right. Yeah. I'm having an issue from my side, but please bear with me. I'm trying to do to do this one or two sets of. Okay. So. Please, right. let's, let's so meet you. Do I have you. the floor? Yeah, let's meet you. Okay. Let's meet you. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm glad we are finally up. Um, I was actually laughing myself out when uh, Mayowa was distorting the name. So I'll <laughs> call out my name. <laughs> my name is Ruke Uviete Siri. I'm from Delta. I think that's why Mayowa found it very difficult to pronounce I think so. I think but so. you can just call me Rookie. Yes, I understand that perfectly. I guess that's a lot. You can just call me Rookie. Um, I'm an internationally certified development project management professional. Simply put, what I do is um, I'm a development practitioner. I work in the NGO sector, which is also called the third sector or the development sector. And over the years, what I have done is to work with um, Nigerian NGOs to ensure that programs are effective and also support business development in the areas of grant writing and proposal development. Currently, I work in an international, an international NGO. I'm a conflict okay. analyst and a peace building practitioner. I work under the deepening peace in the Niger Delta project in the Niger Delta for such search for common ground and the project is funded by the german corporation i also run a consulting outfit okay. strategic outcomes consulting so i'm um, very big thank you to my OWA. thank you very much for me this evening to come and give a little talk and 
hold a conversation around how NGOs can raise funds, more like fundraising, to support your project, support your programs in order to give back to society, solve crucial social problems and really impact lives. So thank you for having me, Mayowa. Yeah, welcome, man. Uh, it's good to have you. So we'll, if you have the floor right now, we can proceed. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening once again. Like I said earlier, my name is Rookie, and this evening we'll be looking at fundraising for NGOs. So we know that uh, we have a lot of NGOs in Nigeria, across Africa and the world over. But before we dive into the nitty gritties or the tactics of how we can fundraise for our NGO projects, I would like to lay a background or a context for today's um, class, for today's master class. So now a lot of people start out with passion. You see a lot of young people and people are saying, I am passionate about making friends in the world. I am passionate about uh, creating impact with laudable ideas, beautiful ideas. But sometimes those ideas are not aligned within the context of solving problems. So no matter how beautiful your idea is, no matter how laudable that you think that idea is, that is um, you get inspired by that idea, you want to give back to society. If it's not targeted at solving pressing social problems across communities in the country or in the world globally, then you will not be able to attract the needed attention and financial support for the work that you want to do. So the very first thing you want to take into consideration seriously is to ensure that all of your ideas, all of your initiatives or concepts are clearly targeted at resolving specifically defined problems. For instance, if you have a beautiful idea around how you want to build the capacity of women, you want to build the capacity of young people to be able to do certain things, maybe to be able to participate during elections. There is a whole lot of agitation about the inclusion of young people in electoral processes and in governance at all levels. That idea that you have should be targeted at solving problem. You know exactly the problem you are solving. Are you solving the problem of exclusion of young people from governance, for instance? Or are you solving the problem of high level of poverty among women and youth? So as okay. a visionary, as someone that has a clear vision, you should be able to know clearly specific problems that your ideas or your concepts are targeted at solving so that it makes easy your fundraising approach your fundraising plans and methodology so that people can easily understand what you are selling people can quickly understand your demand and also see a common point where their own mission aligns with the work you do so beyond the passion beyond the desire to just make a difference in the life of someone you should ensure that these programs are targeted at resolving specific problems especially those that are enshrined in the sustainable development goals. Okay. That All right. Yeah. So we'll quickly continue. Yes. Okay. And so um, we have uh, the name, just as it sounds, the, th the theme for today's discussion, fundraising for NGO. We all understand what it means. How do we get money? How do we get funding? How do we get resources to ensure that our NGO programs have been implemented to reach our beneficiaries and the people that we have set our organization to serve or to help solve their problems. Now, I would not want to go into the technicalities of you know, all of the components of fundraising. I'll just give us quick examples. For example, the very first and one of the most common ways for fundraising is from self-funding, meaning out of your business, or your job, you get maybe a percentage or a proportion of your income to fund your NGO. A lot of NGO, let me say about 10, 80 to 90 percent of NGOs start out like that. What you want to do, the desire to really make a difference in the lives of people, the desire to solve present problems, you decide to invest a proportion of your income 
from your business or from your job to do one or two things. That's how it usually starts before you gather momentum and start seeking for external funding. But for the purpose of today's class, I will be talking specifically about the grant writing process. Okay. With the grant writing, yes, that's what we're going to be focusing on today's class, the grant writing process, meaning funding the projects of our NGO through grants. Okay. Grants are, if simply put, these are uh, monies, uh, resources that are made available for the implementation of projects or programs by NGOs and social enterprises. That means you do not have to return the money back to the donor. You do not return, you do not need to return the money back to the investor. That's the difference between the grant and the loan. For instance, when you take a loan or you take a credit, after implementing your project, maybe after a while, depending on the terms of engagement or the terms of reference, then you have a repayment plan, maybe in the course of just the way our country, Nigeria, takes credit from the World Bank. In the next 20 or 30 years, you have to pay this amount of money back to the World Bank or they will have to get the funds from your resources, like from the revenue from oil sales. That's quite different from the grant. The grant is you have a concept and the donor organization is giving you a specific amount of money to implement that project for what in return for impact for social impact for results for specific that you have stated that your project would be able to deliver to the beneficiaries so the grant is a specific sum of money that has been given to a social enterprise or ngos or individuals to fund a particular project that money is not returned back so for the benefit of those of us who may not have ngos right now but in the future we're think, thinking about setting up an ngo just for us to understand what the grant means so the question is how can we access grants what would it take for us to be able to have access to this level of funding opportunities in order to implement our project and reach more people. There are a whole lot of ways to, you know, get grants, but we're going to talk about grant writing. Grant writing is all, simply put, is a, we submit applications or requests for funding to fund a specific project or a program. And most times we have these donor organizations putting up call for proposals for NGOs and social enterprises to assess these specific amount of funding to fund projects in specific areas. Now we are very familiar with some of the big names in the NGO sector, like um, United Agents, UN agencies like UN Women, UNDP, UNICEF. Uh, we are familiar with the European Union. You're familiar with the British Council and the uh, USA, United States. Uh, Agency for International Development. There are a whole lot of donor organizations. Apart from these very popular ones that we see, you have some silent names. Organizations like MacArthur Foundation, Ford Foundation, Comic Relief, Jokos. There are a lot of organizations, multilateral and bilateral organizations, all across the world that are willing to provide financial support, technical and capacity support to grassroots organizations, local NGOs, community-based organizations, social enterprises, and visionary individuals who have positioned themselves and have clear vision, clear strategy on how they want to solve the problems within their communities so that communities can be safe, thriving, and citizens everywhere can fulfill their aspirations. When I began this discussion, I said something about aligning your ideas or your concept in the context of problem solving a lot mm -hmm. of us we have bright ideas we have beautiful ideas of how we think some things should be done going forward but we need to ensure that whatever ideas that pops up in our minds or in our heart and it's driven quelled by our passion or our desire to see that that idea comes alive it should be within the context of solving problems because what these donors want to see yes it should be solution 
that that is what i'm saying it should be targeted at resolving problems because what this donors invest in it's not your beautiful idea but it's on the ability and to what extent that idea can solve problems okay. so whatever passion we currently have and it's driving us to set up NGOs, to set up social enterprises. We want to be very clear on the problems that that enterprise is going to be solving. Are you going to be solving the problem of lack of access to education or nutrition or basic services like sanitation and water for vulnerable children in underserved communities? Now, it's very clear that this is a problem and you want to solve this problem by whatever beautiful idea or concept that you have come up with. So whatever it is you're very passionate about right now, and you are thinking of seeking for funding or sponsorships to be able to bring those ideas to life, you should ensure that you have clarity on the problems that that idea is solving. Because your organization is not just about you, but it's about other people that you have chosen to represent. It's about the other people that you have chosen to be a voice for, to speak for them so that stakeholders can begin to focus on their needs and put in action to ensure that those problems are resolved. And some of us who set up NGOs were saying that we want to put our voice into the advocacy for certain issues, maybe to stop a violence against women and girls, to stop rape and all that. So in all of this that we're doing, we all need funding to be able to do the work that we have set up our organization to do. So the most, one of the most popular sources of funding, aside self-funding or the ones we try to get from our friends, family, and contemporaries, is the grant. Everybody wants to get grants. And so this is usually done through the grant writing process whereby organizations, NGOs, begin to respond to a certain call for proposal. So now, what's this call for proposal all about? An organization, maybe a multilateral organization, or even a Nigerian NGO that is strategically positioned and has been able to get some level of funding, funding from these bigger organizations or big businesses in the country can also provide grants. For instance, we have foundation the nigerian organization and they're able to provide grants so how do we take advantage of these available grants through the grant writing process this is done through responding to a call for proposal a call for proposal where the grantor or the donor is given a certain level of funding a certain level of amount of money to organizations in order to implement projects they are calling for project concept design so that they can review and make a decision on which of the projects are more compelling so that they can invest in those projects now their return on investment is not physical cash or uh, maybe a hundred percent return on the cash that they have invested but the return on the investment here is the outcome the result from the work that these ngos will be doing in the field how are they able to change the lives of the people that they have set out or designed to support? How are they, the, the capacity building programs that they have said they want to do? What is the outcome? What are the beneficiaries able to do now? And how is this new behavior, new practice, new process, skill able to change their current conditions, which the project concept design has stated it is going to change? now that is what the call for proposal is all about and for you to be able to take advantage of this uh, grants that are available out there as a non-governmental organization you have to understand that just like a business enterprise just like businesses are highly competitive everybody is competing for the same set of customers so you need to position your organization brand positioning you need to okay. position your organization as an expert or as a specialist in a specific area so that you can attract high paying clients that is the same way you have to run your organization 
they completed competitive process. Thousands of thousands of organizations are also applying for the same grant that you are applying for. Applying for. And one of the assumptions, yes, and one of the assumptions we need to begin to work on to change, especially as new NGOs in this field. Most times when you see a young organization or you see a new NGO and you're trying to find out all about their programs, okay, what do you do? Or maybe you see some beautiful stories or pictures online and you're trying to ask what it is all about and ask them, how has been the journey so far? Most times you hear this organization, uh, the organization's leaders saying that it's been funding, they've not been able to get funding, it's been quite challenging scaling their operations because of the lack of funding or limited funding. And you ask yourself that, is it that these people are waiting for organizations to look at them, for the donors to just see, okay, there is ABC Foundation, right? They come and collect money. Just the way you wouldn't sit down as a business owner and expect that customers would just work in, especially in these days where business has become highly competitive, that means you need to put your product out right. You need to put your service out there. You need to put a message, a brand message out there so that people, your ideal clients, can be attracted to your service and want to buy from you, want to buy into your products and their services in order for them to solve specific problems. In the same vein, as a non-governmental organization, you need to have clarity on your nonprofit brand message what message are you putting out there what problems are you able to solve now you have to put yourself out there in order to attract these donors or the stakeholders and one of the ways to do that is through your proposals through your grant proposals where you respond to the call for proposals for from this uh, multilateral organizations or donor organizations you have it as a marketing process or as a selling process where you are putting your best foot forward it's not a, an opportunity where you think that it's not a, a platform or a channel where you feel that these donors are supposed to understand that the work i do is very logical or the work i do is very necessary we have to help these women or we have to help those children you have to sell yourself why should they pick you over the other thousands of organizations who are working to support children or who are working to support women? So it is a selling process. That means you need to be very clear on what you're offering, the problems you're resolving. You have to be very, very clear on what your your expertise, your capabilities are, so that as you respond to the call for proposal as you develop proposals and build your project concept to sell to the donor you can be very sure that you will get a positive feedback because you have put out your best self out there and the grant writing process sometimes you may have word limits or depending on the template that the donor is using so you might not have all of the opportunities to fully express all that you do as an organization or all of your strengths and your capability so it's about being smart about how you respond or how the information that you put together in your proposal document so for you as a non-governmental organization if you want to be able to access consistently funding and the resources to be able to implement your project you should be ready to be a good marketer and a good salesman you should be ready to talk about right like your brand i'm using the word brand because i want to look at it from a business perspective you're yeah. selling services you're selling solutions and the donors as and all the stakeholders have to buy into your vision because not until someone buys into your vision they are not compelled to invest in your vision it has to be compelling enough and they should understand that this project or this program or this concept is really, really necessary, is really, really needed to solve specific problems for specific targeted set of people in your community. So it's not about jumping into the bandwagon that, yes, 
everybody is setting up NGOs, politicians are setting up NGOs. I think that's the next thing I should do. I'll be retiring from my work very soon, so I have to retire into my NGO. No, your non-governmental organization is all about solving specific problems. And your ability to get consistent funding is very crucial for the survival and the sustainability of the work that you are doing. So you need to ensure that you are building capabilities marketing and sales is very very important for you as a non-governmental organization and your tool or your channel to be able to do that is through the grant proposals how do you put together a grant proposal that is compelling enough for your prospective donor to want to invest in your idea if you notice when i began this class i kept talking about solving problems i yes. kept not just um, it's a good idea, or this is a nice to have project, or a nice to have concept. It has to be resolving problems, and not just any problems, problems within the context of the sustainable development goals. Everything you do, every donor out there, every stakeholder out there, especially when it comes to this mainstream uh, bilateral, multilateral organization, so that such as the UN agencies or the EU and all of these other develop, international development um, um, organizations. It's all about advancing the SDGs, all about advancing the sustainable development goals so that all of themselves to be able to achieve by 2030 can come to life. So if you're designing a project that is not in the context of the SDGs, there's every likelihood that that proposal is going to fail. Because actually, it's not even about you as an NGO, but it's about the donor who wants to advance his mission or his strategic plan towards achieving the SDGs, their own part or their own component part of the sustainable development goals. So while approaching a prospective donor, you also need to find that common ground or that common point between what you do as an organization and between the mission of that donor organization. Even if you're not meeting a mainstream donor, let's say you want to engage businesses like Globalcom, NTN, or other highly profitable um, businesses within Nigeria, you need to find that common ground between what you are doing, the change you are trying to create, and what those businesses are trying to achieve? What is their agenda? We know businesses these days have corporate social responsibility, but you also need to understand what is the vision or what's the intention of that corporate social responsibility of that organization and how do you communicate? How does it align or tie together with what you're doing? So we understand clearly that as a non-governmental organization, we need funding, we need money to be able to survive or sustain the good work we're doing, but we need to be strategic. We need to start thinking like million dollar businesses, you know, being intentional with our engagement, being intentional with our planning. So you do not just engage a donor organization or write a letter of request to an organization requesting for something. You should be able to sell yourself. You should be able to sell programs and um, your projects as an NGO. So what's in it for the donor? You're writing a request to MTN, for instance, you're requesting for five million naira to be able to fund the human capacity building program in your local community. You need to ask yourself, what does MTN stand to benefit if they should the invest in that project or program? Yes, what would they, what would they benefit? Because they are in this for business, they are in this to grow their bottom line, for them to have more customer base, more sales, more revenue, and more profit at the end of the day. So if you're going to be engaging with business organization for them to sponsor your programs, you need to be able to think, you need to be able to try to get into the mind of your prospective donor and think like them. If I was the one in the shoes of the, the donor, how would I think? What would be my interest in this project? What is my own mission? How will this project advance the mission of the donor? So you want to find that intersection between the problems you are solving for specific people, your mission, your vision, and also the vision of the donor. 
every donor invests in projects and programs that advances their own mission. So it's not all about, about you at this time, but it's about the interest of the donor. That's why sometimes even when some proposals are successful, there's some level of realignment that the donor organization wants to do to ensure that, okay, this really fits into our strategic plan. And one other thing that you could do, if you want to really take advantage of the grant writing process, you need to be a good researcher. You need to be able to do in-depth research to study your prospective donor. Now, I always like comparing the um, social enterprises, NGOs, uh, community-based organizations to businesses. If you're running a business, you want to run a successful business, even if it's a small business, you're starting up a small business or you want to scale operations, one of the first things you need to put into consideration is to have high level of clarity on your ideal customers. That's where this whole thing about client avatar, customer avatar, customer persona, for you to understand their dreams, their aspirations, the problems, their pain points so that you can develop products and services that are painkillers for your ideal customer. That applies to this sector also, because you want to develop projects, you want to develop programs that are painkillers to your donors that align with their own vision for development. So I think with all of those things that um, we've been talking about, by the time you begin to put them into consideration, you're going to prepare yourself and you increase your ability, strengthen your ability to develop high quality proposals to submit. The proposal writing process is a systematic process that actually uses some level of tools to be able to design those um, documents. But with what we have discussed today, even if you're engaging with private businesses, you have some level of knowledge and capacity to be able to do that and get some level of funding for your project. So I would like to call it a wrap at this moment. And I know we'll have more engagement within the group. We'll have more classes to go further in the topic of fundraising or how our programs can be very effective. So thank you very much, Mayowa, for having me this evening. You are welcome. You have done a good job. Thank you so much for the class. Uh, in fact, you have, you, as for me, you have opened my eyes. And what I even don't know, you have enlightened me. And honestly, I must commend you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm trying to check whether we have uh, uh, any question or any but nothing like that right now. But I have questions. I have questions. Number one, to okay. set up an NGO, what are the criteria that someone or an organization must follow? That is what I'll first ask, right? Okay. I'll just quickly respond to that because it's actually getting noisy. Mm, I understand. Uh, can, can I respond to that in the comment section? Because it's getting really we can noisy go around here. You know, it's, get, it's getting it's noisy, but we can, we can continue. Yeah. Those who like what you are doing, they won't bother about the, the noisy or the background or whatever that is going on. Let's just... Okay, so um, from, from the discussion, I've been talking about getting clear on the problems you want to solve so that you can have a clearly defined vision statement, you can have clear defined mission and strategic objective. So the next thing you want to do if you have the funding while starting is to initiate your registration with the Corporate Affairs Commission. That's after you have chosen your board of trustees because you have a vision. Okay. Definitely you have to work with other people who have, who have like mine and can give some level of support either maybe financially or with their relationships with the network of people in their relationships and um, also capabilities, expertise within that area. Maybe you want to go into health. There should be someone who is a health specialist on your board, for instance, best practices, so that at every point in time you can pull in those levels of resources available to you to ensure that your programs are effective. So when you understand, we have clarity on what you want to do, the problems you want to solve, the people who you want to target, then you should start looking for who are going to be the members of my board, who are going to be members of the board of trustees. That is if you want to take it further and have a structured organization that even can outlive you. You're not just doing it as 
okay, passion and giving back. I'm just there trying to help one or two persons. If you want to set up a studio, when you're clear on your mission, your strategic objectives, you choose your board of trustees, you develop your bylaws. What are those laws? What are those um, set of rules that is going to be as members of the board? How often are we going to be having our annual general meeting? What happens when someone is no longer interested in being a member of the board? Or what are your rights, your entitlement, privileges, and boundaries as a board member? Some of the regulations, then you initiate your registration with the Corporate Affairs Commission. So that's the very first thing you want to consider. But let me just put it clear here that doing the registration with the Corporate Affairs Commission is not a free ticket to funding. It's not a free ticket to money because that's a lot of um, it's a lot of spec uh, assumption around that. So you see startups that they want to do their CAC registration because that is the only thing that is holding them from getting enough money to fund it. And at the end of the day, you registered, the certificate is there. You're not being strategic about how you want to get the funding. And 10 years down the line, there's no investment in what you're doing. So why is it essential to do your CAC registration and get all of those um, e um, documentations and structures that has to do with compliance, especially with um, federal laws and some of the requirements that the prospective donors in the future would require of you? You want to ensure that you are focused on the quality of the work that you're doing and the outcomes from the work that you're going to be doing. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Yeah. Let, let me ask this last question, Ross. <laughs> so, what to write okay. when 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 we are right when someone wants to write a proposal? What are those things that mm. they must pay attention to, or the more they should include in the proposal that they are writing? Okay, every proposal is different. It depends on who is the person for So it's entirely on the donor so documents that a donor maybe documents that us unicef might be different from what uh, um, us aid or uk aid will be asking for so you want to ensure that whatever you're doing is not just the speculation but exactly what the donor has requested for sometimes the donor we ask for audited account statements sometimes they will ask for cac registration sometimes they will ask for reference letters from other donors you have worked with in the past or okay. reference letters for some of your beneficiaries so it all depends on what the donor is requesting for you want to ensure that as you're submitting your proposal you are doing it in line with the requirements and the eligibility criteria of whoever has put out that call for proposal okay thank you so much uh uh okay. thank you so much let me let me quickly check the group whether we have any comments or any questions so because we, we need to add up i understand that number one is late and yeah, he, he, he have family to attend to. To run back. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much uh so, um just a quick one for people okay. who want to build their capacities around the proposal writing we're going to be launching one of our uh uh bundles very soon it is called the winning grant proposal system is a step-by-step -step process teaching you how to develop high quality grant proposals and we are developing it for strategic outcomes i personally from the proposals i've written i've been able to mobilize um have successful documents valued at over 250 million naira and i have another partner and strategic outcome who has done more than three times that so we're pulling all of our expertise together and developing this um, uh, product and uh, we are very sure that you are going to benefit a whole lot from using the winning grant proposal system and look out for the link in the group anytime soon we'll be um, sending that information well, when is the program coming up it's uh, an online course okay online it's course. an online okay. course now yes immediately we'll launch that online course we'll schedule um, uh, master classes workshops or masterminds to be able to help people build their capacities around developing high quality proposals so that they can get the funding they need. But the first thing that will be hitting um, our audience very soon is the winning grants proposal system. Okay, thank you so much. We don't have any questions right now from the group. Yeah. So uh, if, uh, if anyone wants to contact you, how will you be able to contact you? Okay, um, you can contact me with the phone number 
or with my email i think we'll leave that in the comment section mm -hmm. so that people can click you can drop your email on the uh, uh you can drop your email okay your email Smart and then Technic. maybe with the website we have blog too and then your social media the website yeah yeah there's a website i have a website and the email and the phone number that okay. people can reach me the fastest one is the email and the phone number though okay yes then okay so we'll to, type it in the comment section or you don't want I'll to, just call I'll, it out. why don't you just because this video is going to on youtube it's going to on youtube so okay it's better you just strategic outcomes okay. so strategic outcomes at gmail.com spell it s m okay s m a r Okay. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. S M A R C E G I C outcomes O U T C O M E S at okay. gmail dot com. Okay. Smartagic outcomes at gmail dot com. The website is smartagic outcomes dot com. Then the number to call quickly is zero eight zero eight two six eight 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 four okay zero eight zero eight two six eight 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 four smartagic outcomes at gmail.com okay and if if you have any maybe you have your podcast link or your blog link, yeah you can we, also drop there um we can you can join us on the ngos for impact network is a facebook community just like okay. where we are now so we have weekly classes every Friday by 2 p.m. every week where we hold a lot of conversations around pressing issues and how NGOs can begin to strengthen their capabilities to deliver better outcomes for their programs and get, get some funding opportunities. So it's NGOs for Impact Network. Okay, thank you so much. When we are coming, uh, when you are coming, I think you you came in with some of your uh, of your audience or your followers. So what would you like to say to them before you leave? Okay, so thank you very much for joining me. I'm so excited um, having you guys join me on this conversation. So more of this conversation will be holding. So I want to appreciate you all for your support, for listening, for joining us tonight. So thank you very much. So thank you so much for joining us on Cross Road Africa. We are excited that you, you honor our invitation. So thank you so much. Right. Please, when that your course is out, let us aware of it so that yes. those of us who would like to uh, to partake in making purchasing decisions will be able to do that. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll let you know once out. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are we are waiting for Have that. Have a lovely and you too. Good night, thank everyone. You. Thank you so much and. Crossroad Africa is where we are going to end this section right now. We thank you, Madam Kwebe, for joining us tonight. And do have a lovely night. Uh, good night. And Crossroad Africa, this is where we are going to end this section. Thank you and see you later. Bye.